Welcome to the first episode of season two of the Way Up Podcast with Jeff Knoll. That's me. In this edition, I engage in a thought-provoking conversation with the prolific Joel Kamm. Joel is a New York Times best-selling author, keynote speaker, consultant, entrepreneur, and co-host of the immensely popular Bad Crypto Podcast. With a track record of 15 books, TED Talks, and multiple business ventures under his belt, Joel has consistently been ahead of the curve in the ever-evolving tech landscape. Join us as Joel shares his insights on fearlessly swinging the bat, embracing failures, and persistently exploring different paths until achieving the satisfying results he's known for. Get ready for a journey through the mindset of a tech trailblazer on the Way Up Podcast. The Way Up Podcast is proudly brought to you by my real estate team, the Noble Team EXP Realty. We're redefining industry standards and the markets we operate. Distinguishing ourselves from the crowd, we leverage our uniqueness to gain a strategic edge, all while elevating not only ourselves, but also those in our world, including our competitors. Join us on this journey of innovation and excellence. Your time and investment will undoubtedly be well-placed. Hang with us till the end. I know you won't be disappointed. I am incredibly excited to be here with my new friend, Joel Calm. We actually just met just before this, but i um, super excited to have you with us, brother. And now we're like this. We're just like super close. We're like, going on this cruise together in, in March, and that's going to be amazing. Pretty well best friends. Like, you know, my uncle and my aunt, and that's yeah. pretty well family. So that's fantastic. They are my family, and we're now best friends. Yeah. But- literally your family so uh, one degree of separation yeah pretty close so just go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself um a little bit about who you are man gosh i'm just a dude living in puerto rico uh, enjoying my best life i've been doing my own business for internet in tech business for into my 29th year now uh, I got into the internet very early, built my first website back in 1995, and since that time have done just about everything that's not illegal, immoral, or fattening uh, that you can do online, you know, from blogging and writing books and speaking and podcasting and videos and live video marketing and social media marketing, uh, building sites, selling sites, flipping sites, domaining, and uh, over the past six years or so, I've really gone down the crypto rabbit hole. And uh, myself and my friend Travis Wright have been hosting the Bad Crypto Podcast um, since mid-2017, fascinated with crypto and blockchain and have minted over a million and a half NFTs of our um, own original intellectual property and uh, just, you know, having a good time. I like to play with the toys and see what the, the newest stuff is and see if it interests me. Well, all the all of the tech has really treated you guys pretty well too. You're living in Puerto Rico. How long have you been there? Yeah, so it's uh, it'll be three years uh, this coming April. Moved here in 2021, and uh, enjoying it in an incredible community of of uh, people. You know, we're not really expats because we're still U.S. citizens. We're just living on an island that's not a U.S. state but is a U.S. territory, and uh, reaping the benefits of doing so because of something called Act 60, which you, your listeners can go ahead and uh, and search for online. But essentially, it means since I live here um, more than half the year for me it's most of the year and uh, run my business here I pretty much don't pay any capital gains taxes any longer and I only pay a four percent business tax so uh, we're surrounded by high performers that uh, are willing to take risks and understand the benefits uh, of doing so well it's awesome you can do that really probably anywhere that you have internet connection right where your tech business, you can, you can be anywhere. Oh yeah. And I have, I mean, when I started my business in 1995, I was in, uh, in Plano, Texas. And then I lived in the Oklahoma city area. And then I lived in Denver and Northern Colorado. And now here and in my business is completely portable. It's, it's wherever I am, as long as I have internet access and I could do it from anywhere. Yeah. Well, so I got turned on to you from we are both going on this San Juan social cruise in March. And 
I saw your name come into the WhatsApp group and my, my aunt Judy is like, Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Joel calms coming. And my uncle had told me when we were in Puerto Rico in October about one of his friends named Joel that has a crypto called it's the bad crypto podcast. He told, he told me all about it. And that's really outside of my world right now. I want to learn all about this. Don't get me wrong. I want to know like 65% of what you said when you were talking about what all you do may as well have been in a different language because it's, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not as techie. I wish I was, I wish I could have been that guy. Um, but I'm stretching well, myself. You're, you're the learning. guy that you are. I am. And I'm learning yeah. new things every day. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe one day but I you're, you're going to learn yet. this. You're definitely going to learn this because mainstream adoption is is coming uh, very soon. Uh, we're 15 years into Bitcoin now. I've been tracking it for almost seven years, and uh, we've been waiting for the watershed moment where we turn the corner with Bitcoin, and it's it's upon us. It's going to happen um, early next year is, is the prediction that I believe, and we're going to see an interest in Bitcoin and crypto um, by mainstream, unlike ever before. It's coming and uh, there's no financial advice attached to this, but I'm saying you will learn the language. You will be using cryptocurrency um, in all likelihood. You will own NFTs in some way, shape or form. You will participate in the Web3 world that uh, that is coming your way. And, and you'll understand it a lot better, especially as it becomes more user friendly and uh, onboarding becomes easy. Well, you said there's no financial advice as part of that, but you have the reputation. You're a futurist. You've called out so many things before they've happened of this is a trend that you need to hop on. This is something that you need to be paying attention to. And you've called them out really many, many, many of them that has served you very well and made you lots and lots of money over over the years doing that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it's not because I'm so smart, honestly. Uh, it's really not, Jeff. It's because uh, I'm always fascinated by new technology. And like I said earlier, I like to play with the toys. Like, show me what I can do. What does this thing do? And I, I test out things and, and I either go, well, that doesn't work or that works, but it's not for me or that works and I'm really interested in it. And, you know, typically when I'm really interested, I, go down the rabbit hole further and further. And as you do that, you become more proficient and you begin to master whatever that thing is. And invariably, when you master something, people come to you and say, well, how did you do that? Which leads to the side of me that is the natural teacher. And so it leads to books and speaking and blogging and podcasting and all the things that I really enjoy doing. You know, I can't shoot hoops. I can't dance, can't really sing, but I can teach. Like, give me my subject matter and I can show, I can take seemingly complex subject matter and make it easy for people to understand because I, I speak a language that I understand. I'm I'm not highly technical. I don't dig the 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 pointy head stuff. I can't code my way out of a paper bag, but I can learn how to use this stuff and leverage it for my business and for my life. Right. Dude, that's awesome. You um you absolutely have a way of connecting with people. I uh I when I was researching you, I was, I looked up you on YouTube. I was watching all, all the videos I could see. I did watch some of the bad crypto. I watched, um, uh, the, the Ted talk, the mile high Ted talk mm -hmm. and man alive. I was like, at that point, that's when I actually reached out to you and said, Hey, would you be willing to come on my podcast? Because you struck a chord with me. You were, you were so vulnerable and you talked about, um, you know, addictions and how freeing it is and how powerful it is to be able to just talk about that, you know? Yeah. Do you want to go into anything on that? Would you, would you mind? You can ask me whatever you want, man. I mean, I'm here. I'm happy to share. Yeah. So like the, I don't exactly know, even if you just expound on Kind of how do you get from being normal guy? Did you grow up in Texas? You said you started in Plano. Is that where you were at? No, no. I actually grew up 
I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. I'm an Illinois native and spent the first 21 years of my life there, went to school at University of Illinois. And it wasn't until after I graduated that I escaped for a warmer climate. But uh, I'm okay. one of those guys who stood in the bus stop in the freezing cold winters and am happy if I never see another snow day again. <laughs> right. Well, so I, I heard you say in that TED talk that your parents divorced when you were 12. So maybe start, yeah. how does, how does the kid growing up and the, the household is now broken, everything is shaken. Mm -hmm. And how do you become this kid in the broken home to your Joel calm? You are this guy that, that is involved and builds these massive businesses. Well, so I don't know how to even, I, I'm not sure how to uh, absorb that question. When you say I'm Joel calm, there's a, yes, I am. And at the same time, there's nothing particularly special about that. I'm just me. Right. So any, it almost sounds like there's some sort of pedestal there and, and that's not, that's not who I am. Right. I'm just a guy on my journey who went down my path and have fallen on my face a zillion times. Um, and I've always been willing to take risks and in doing so every now and then, you know, it's like stepping up to the bat, you know, you swing at the, at the plate and every now and then you connect with the ball and sometimes you hit a home run. Uh, you know, if you're willing to take chances and swing enough, you're eventually going to hit the ball. And so that's really the story of, of my success is just swinging a lot. Um, don't take that the wrong way, people. No. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, uh, divorce is rough on kids, no matter how old they are. And anybody who says it's not is is trying to sell you something is lying to you um, because it's not the natural of order of things. But it's what happened. You know, it's what happened in our life. And and my kids face the uh, the same consequences because I was married 24 years and then divorced. And so, you know, there are, there are cycles to these things and sometimes history repeats itself, whether or not you want it to, but, you know, I've always been, uh, even as a child, I was curious. Um, I, I like to play and explore and try new things. And um, I think that that mindset of doing what you want to do, right? Always trying the things that you want to try, experimenting, not being afraid to fail with it and taking risks is really one of the greatest predictors of whether or not somebody is going to succeed in business or not. Those who play it safe, you know, those who um, go to college because they're going to be a professional, they want the secure salary and they want the lifetime, the, the, the you know, health benefits and all the things that come with that. They're not cut out for entrepreneurial um, you know, type of lifestyle. And uh, I've got people that I know that have five, 10, 20 year plans. <laughs> I, I barely ever have a one year plan. Um, I'm doing what I'm doing right now until I'm not doing that anymore. And then I'm doing something else. And part of that is, um, is personality. It's how we're wired. And part of it is intentional. Uh, you know, you're, you're not going to have crazy wild success having the lifestyle that you want if you conform to being the worker drone that society prepares you to be. That's what our schools prepare. You know, our schools were designed to create factory workers. They're not there. They don't educate these kids. They don't um, foster individuality. They don't look at what they're strong in and focus the education on um, bolstering those strengths. No, they try to do a cookie cutter. Okay. You need to barely get by with all of these different disciplines and um, it's not creating excellence. So uh, I'm not sure that that is an answer to the question you had, but that's it, it was. It and I'm honestly super glad that you said what you did. You have made me feel better because I feel like sometimes I'm flying by the seat of my pants. You said that you do you're doing what you do right now until you're doing something yeah. different. And yeah, I feel like that is, that is me a lot. Um, what, what kind of nothing wrong with that, man, nothing yeah. wrong with that. And by the way, I'll be real. I'll be, let me be really vulnerable with you. Okay. Um, I, you know, like I say, I've been at this since 1995, I was 30 when I started. Um, and so next year I turned 60 years old which is really, it's an eye opener. It's on one hand, I don't feel it. I don't think I look it, but you definitely do don't. Not, look, I definitely, you don't look 60, man. I would have not Whatever guessed we that. Thought 60, 
I appreciate that. Whatever we thought 60 was supposed to look like when I was younger, that's like that was really old. I don't act like it. You know, I still play video games every day and and uh, and I and I'm playful. I like to have fun. I like to have fun with my my girlfriend and my dog and my kids and my friends and, you know, traveling and, and seeing the world. And it's just I don't know. I've I've got this whole adulting thing down. I'm good at adulting. But growing up, that's that's never going to happen. So I have, I tend to have uh, Jeff, a four to six year cycle on my area of interest with various permutations. You know, if you look at my history, I did, I was early to website building and then I was early to affiliate marketing. And then I was early to, uh, um, app building and social media marketing. And I kind of go through these cycles. I write these books, I speak. And then by the time I've had enough of it, that's when the mainstream's coming in, right? Same thing with crypto. You know, I got an early, we'd been doing this podcast for, we're in our seventh year right now. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun, but I'm, I don't have the passion that I used to have for some of the things I've been talking about for six years. Yeah. And I'm like in transition right now. I'm trying to, I'm waiting for what is that next thing that's going to catch my interest in my eye that I'm going to be passionate about. It's it when you're in that in-between place where you don't know what you're going to do next, it's, it's like, okay, where, where's my meaning? Where's my purpose right now? What am I supposed to be doing? And for me, um, I've gotten comfortable in living in that in-between place to some degree, but you still always find yourself asking, what if there's not another thing? What, what if my best work is behind me? What do I do then? And of course, something always comes up and I end up going down a rabbit hole, but I'm in that place literally right now. I just had a conversation with a very dear friend who's known me for years, just a couple nights ago saying, Hey, I'm kind of struggling a little bit because I don't know what I want to do now. So there you go. There's a little transparency for you. No, oh, that is awesome. And everybody wants to be passionate about what they're doing. I mean, I would say most people aren't passionate about what they're doing, but everybody at least wants to be passionate about what they're doing because there's dissatisfaction with, with, you know, feeling like you're not serving your purpose. You're not connecting to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with, with the history that you have, I can only imagine that the next thing is going to be something big and exciting too, just, just because of what you've already produced in your life. I, I hope so. I I'm trying to imagine what it looks like, but you know, when crypto came al along, I was in the same crisis. Uh, I was just putting the finishing touches on my last book, I've done 15 books and my last one's called The Fun Formula, which is really my most personal book um, and the one that's evergreen. If you haven't read it yet, I encourage you to pick up a, a copy. Um, and The Fun Formula is not a mathematical formula, but I kind of reverse engineered my successes and my failures from my entire career. And I discovered that this whole idea of working hard is only good in small pockets. Uh, the whole hustle and grind mentality is ridiculous. You burn yourself out. I discovered that I had the greatest success when I was having the most fun and not working crazy, crazy hours and doing the, the whole hustle and grind uh, again and again and again and again and again. It wasn't a one-off. It wasn't a fluke. There really is a formula to it that it, I believe others can apply to as well. And while I'm writing the book, I'm telling others, hey, follow your curiosity, be willing to take risks, and then trust the process. And of course, the trust the process means you have to wait. You have to wait until the time is right. And I'm turning this manuscript into my editor and I'm having this own existential crisis of going, what, what do I do now? I don't know. I don't know what to do now. And before you know it, I'm talking crypto with uh, my friend, Travis Wright. And one day he says, Hey, we should start a show. And the moment he said that I was like, yeah, let's do that. And we just threw ourselves into talking about this thing that we wanted to learn more about, we're passionate about, and it resonated with people and the show just blew up. It just took off. And all now, you know, I'm swept into this next phase of my life and I never saw it coming. I was completely blindsided by it. And so um, I just think it's ironic that as I'm trying to teach people that they have to trust the process, I am being forced to do that very same thing and to watch it play out in my life. And so here I am again, and uh, 
waiting for whatever comes next. Well, that's, that's the process. That's really what this whole show is about. And I'm, I'm hoping that as people are watching, I, I started out, nobody, nobody knew who I was whatsoever, which there's a small amount of people locally that know who I am. Now I'm building a business. I, I have a real estate team in Missouri. And so I'm building this up and just the, the whole process, it is you're, you're starting and you're learning. So I am reaching out to everybody, all of these successful entrepreneurs, and they don't even have to be that I'm, I'm learning from people that have gone before me and done something. And it makes me actually incredibly excited to hear you say that you're, you're one of many successful business owners that have said that, you know, don't believe the lie that you have to work 70 to 80 hours a week because several of them, they get, they're close to your age and they're saying, man, I lost my wife. I lost out on all this time with my kids. I was doing it for them. I was, I, in my mind, I was doing all of this for them. And I ended up missing out on it the the whole reason I was doing it. So yeah. they're, they're like, Hey, please don't make the same mistake as it, that I made. I want to avoid making mistakes. I want to learn what, what makes you, you, what makes you climb to the top when other people that are doing similar things aren't getting there. So dude, I really appreciate that perspective. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, Jeff, I don't feel like it's climbing. Um, I feel like it's walking, uh, because I feel like when you're doing something that you're made to do, it's a lot more effortless than people would have you believe. Again, I'm not saying there's not a time to buckle down and do the work there is right. And you have to, you have to put in the work, but, uh, my successes have felt a lot more effortless than my failures, uh, the failures feel like I've, you know, I was working really hard to go nowhere, uh, running up that hill, so to speak. And so it's it's a mindset shift. You know, you learn to question the conventional wisdom if, if it's actually wise at all and why it's conventional, why so many people say the things they say. And you come to discover there's a lot of BS out there. There's a lot of people that are just trying to sell you something, sell you that next book, sell you that course, that training, that product. And uh, especially once you've been in marketing for a while, you see how easy it is to spin something. Um, the news is a perfect example of that. I, you know, the news and McDonald's are probably the two things in the world that are the worst for you. <laughs> you know, one for your body and one for your mind. Uh, McDonald's food, I believe personally, is trash. It's not food. It's not something most fast food, most processed food is not stuff we should be putting in our body. It's toxic. And when you consume the the media, especially the mainstream media sources that are owned by just a few um, massive corporations that are putting out messaging that is akin to uh, it's brainwashing. Uh, they are, they're holding your mind hostage, hostage um, with falsehoods, with uh, emotion, um, with uh, intent that is not in your best interest. Why? Uh, one, because people like control, powerful people like to control others, and they do that through fear and intimidation and through emotion. And because they're in the business of being in business, they have to sell toothpaste and toilet paper. And they do that through their advertising, um, through these, these media channels. And so I found that I've been much happier, for the most part, off of social media. I wrote the book on social media. I was on MySpace at the beginning. I was on Twitter early. I wrote one of the top selling books on Twitter for business ever, three of them in the series, Twitter Power. And I hardly ever touch um, X anymore um, because I'm, I've been on Facebook for almost three years uh, without liking, commenting, sharing any of that. And I've been so much happier because unfortunately, what started out as something that was a positive for people, being able to connect and network and find old family, friends, and, and you know, find a, um, a home in a group of like-minded people, I am convinced that social media has become a net loss 
on society, and especially for our youth. Uh, TikTok is is just as toxic and evil and insidious as it gets. And if you're a parent and you, your kids are on TikTok, then uh, you should have your phone taken away from you as well, uh, because it is it's it's horrible what it's doing to them, how they are being indoctrinated, and uh, that is the end of this rant. Well. I, I'll stop. There. I love that Since you I'm went, sucking all the oxygen. Out I of love them. that you went into that. And I want to, I want to ask you, cause I'm in real estate marketing is I'm in social media all the time and I don't disagree with anything that you said. I, I absolutely feel that, but what would you recommend for somebody who is marketing and trying to build their brand and trying to get in front of people what kind yeah. of networking, how, yeah. what is a better way to do that? Well, look, if you're using it for business, obviously there's, there's no better way you, when you're marketing, you want to go where the people are in social right. media. This, I'm not saying everything about social media is negative. Right. I'm saying it has become a net loss for our society, Sure, that it is more destructive than it is productive. So great. Be one of those people that's doing productive things. You know, my, my friend Owen Hemseth is, does TikTok and he and his family put out positive content, right. but there's most of the content out there is not positive. Most of it is toxic and horrible. Right. Um, and so yay to those who are leveraging. Look, the tools themselves are amoral. It's like I said in my TED talk, social media is neither good nor bad. It's what we do with it. But knowing how we are as human beings, people tend to gravitate towards the negative use of it. It brings out the absolute worst in, uh, in humanity. You know, I just, I saw a great, um, story. I think I saw it on Instagram, um, where a, a school district in, I believe Orlando in Florida has made it, um, against their policy for kids to use their phones during the school day. You cannot take it out. It has to be off. It has to be in your backpack. And uh, after a few weeks, um, they are seeing that the kids are um, uh, in, uh, communicating more with one another. They're seeing a, more of a lightheartedness, more playfulness. Um, they're seeing positive results from yeah. unplugging the kids, even during that short time during the school day. And uh, we have not yet seen the res the real results. We have isolated incidences of the negative consequences of being plugged in all the time. Uh, but we're really going to see it here in this next generation. And uh, we'll see which way the pendulum swings then. Yeah. The, but uh, but to, to full circle there, if you're in business, yeah, of course, go use social media and market to your audience and put out great content, add value, be one of those people that is uh, elevating discourse and using social media for something positive. Uh, you know, your, your customers are out there, so go for it. I just personally, I'm not using it for business. Um, I could be for a podcast, but I don't care to. And personally, I don't choose to integrate because all of those so-called friends friends most of them are not really friends and you know who your friends are and they're in your phone book they're you know you have them and you can call them and you can text them and the people that really matter um they know how to reach me right no there's nothing nothing i disagree with in that my my son is 14 and he is he comes home He's doing home, he's not homeschooling. It's the public school at home this year. But last year he was in normal school with everybody and they have certain times that they could have their phone out. I'm like, man, we didn't even have phones when I was in school. Like if whenever phones were coming right. out, you couldn't have them out in school. Like that would be ridiculous. But oh for yeah, kids to be Never. taking them, I I see so much disrespect. And, you know, they're, they're paying attention to this and they're not listening to what their teachers have to say. So they're not learning. They're, they're missing out on, on what is supposed to be happening. You know, it's just such a distraction, but you know, it is very much something that, you know, I've got to be careful about it. I'm posting stuff. I get my fill of it just from what I have to put on that. I don't want to spend time looking at screens, to be honest, like that's not mm -hmm. my hobby i wish i wish i was techier but that would have me on the computer more i think and 
I look at my computer, I feel like a lot. So, um, I, I get it. You know, I love the, the title of your show, the way up, right. Showing people, um, how do you get from here to there? And, you know, if I could pass on one piece of, uh, advice from, from my trajectory, it's to not follow other people's roadmaps, especially when they're selling you those roadmaps. You know, my fun formula isn't a mathematical formula. It's common sense. Find your creativity, take risks and trust the process. That's like, you know, there's not a, a, a road, one size fits all roadmap to that. Um, you have to pave your own trail. And sometimes that means you're going to march to a beat that nobody else can hear uh, because that is the way to greatness. You know, if you look at anybody who's done anything significant in their lives, invented anything, created something, their parents and those who knew them would look at them and say they were different. But people are afraid to be different. They want to fit in. Fit into what? Right. What do, we, what do you want to fit into? Some a, a box that somebody else has created for you? That's a load of nonsense. Wow, what a way to keep somebody captive from uh, and, and held back from living out their potential. You do you and don't give a flying crap what anybody else thinks about it. That's that, the way up. That very thought kept me from leaning into who I am for a extremely long time, worrying about what other people mm, think, fear. wanting to fit in wanting to be like other people, but I'm not other people. I'm, I'm me. I'm, and I am different. Yep. And for the most part, people like me. And if you don't, it's not, who cares if it's, they not don't. it's not it, my job to make you like me. It's not my job. It's so, not. Here's something that interesting that dawned on me. Uh, I don't know which presidential cycle it was, which election it was, but it dawned on me that um, as a country, we're so divided that it's very rare that you ever get a president that passes 50% approval rating of the people. And I'm like, okay, if the president of the United States can't get half of the people to like him, then who the heck am I? Why should why should I care? And the haters out there, and I have them, I've got people out there that, you know, um, I, I guess I live in their their head rent free for whatever reason or not. The, the, the people who criticize you are the people who aren't doing what you're doing. Right. They're the ones that there's jealousy, there's envy. And so I look at those people and I'm like, okay, that's really sad. I hope that you uh, you find your peace. They want to be when they criticize you. They want to think that their criticism of you is somehow relevant. And I couldn't even tell you their names. I they're ir irrelevant to me. They're they're nothing. And um, I don't remember what movie it was in or what story I saw, but somebody uh, said to one character, "I uh, I hate you." Right. I despise you. And the answer from the person that was being criticized was, I nothing you. I don't hate you. I don't like you. I don't, I, I nothing you. I don't care. You're, you're nothing to me. And not to be inhumane, because sometimes people are crying for help. Right. And if there's a way that you feel led to help them in their, their anger and their bitterness, that's great. But if not, uh, there's 8 billion people on this world <laughs> right, right now on this planet. And uh, you don't need them all to like you. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. The people that are destined to be part of your life are going to be part of it. And the people that don't want you to, to have things, they really don't have any control over whether you do or don't. So it doesn't really matter. You know, there's people out there that will, they, they like the conversation on social media and they like to hear the different opinions and people that want to argue with them. And I'm like, I'm not interested in that. If you want to fight with me, uh, you're blocked. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't want that negativity in my life. I don't want, I'm not asking for conflict. And when I do use social media, it's because there's something I want to say. I'm not inviting your opinion. I don't care what you think about it. It's because there's something that I'm thinking that I want to share. It's not an invitation for you to tell me why I'm wrong. Just a one point of view. Yeah. For using yeah. social. Well, 
I'm I'm running out of time on this. I do want Uh-oh. to tell you, man, can't even thank you enough for coming on. You are honestly one of the most humble people that I have ever talked to on this show that has built the level of success that you have. Just to hear you talk, you're you're incredibly humble, and that is fantastic. Well, it doesn't help when you uh, tell me I'm humble. It makes me feel proud of it. So you should be. <laughs> you should be proud of the fact that you are exactly who you are. Um, I appreciate you. Do you have any final thought for the for the listeners? Uh, you just subscribe to the show. Give subscribe them, to the uh, show. Likes and thumbs up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, and if you guys want to follow me anywhere, um, I'm not on uh, Twitter or X very much. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram and hear my opinions without telling me why I'm wrong, at Joel Com. Uh, you can go to my blog, joelcom.com. I sometimes send out a uh, email to my followers if you subscribe to my list. All right. Perfect. I appreciate you. Have a lovely day. Thanks, bro.